This is a post from the Reddit subreddit called CPTS Freeze, and the title is My shame keeps me frozen a lot more than I realize this pervasive sense of unworthiness. It's by a user called good to go 5656 I can stay in neglect for days. I have to be hurting before I actually do anything for myself. It's the dynamic of what I grew up with. Treating me deplorably or waiting until something reached a crisis. Only then my mother would do something nice for me, but didn't do something caring and attentive for no reason. I either had to work for it or suffer for it. So if you carry a lot of shame, I can go through the motions of self-care with enough pleading and prodding, chastising myself for being lazy, but eventually it's like trying to keep a car going with no gas. Your mind is just fighting you all the time because your worth is in question. I'm trying to get through Jasmine Lee Corey's book, The Emotionally Absent Mother. All the ways I suffered numerous, numerous deficits are all there. Some I knew about, others I didn't. Self-care requires a totally different mindset, different skills, a positive experience of being cared for and loved, valued. I don't even know what that is. I have to keep going back and rereading the content, not for lack of understanding, but disbelief. How is it possible that I didn't get anything? Nothing? What constitutes normal parenting sounds like some kind of fantasy that doesn't exist. Children that are cared for? Automatically? They don't have to advocate or debate their worthiness. Parents want to care for them. They love them as they are. It feels like a surreal premise. My experience doesn't feel insane. This other fantasy scenario seems insane. My mother's attitude was, well, if you can't help me, then why should I do anything for you? totally mercenary. I remember thinking, what am I supposed to do for you? Why do I have to do anything for you to act like a mom? My mother was creative. She found all kinds of ways for me to reimburse her for parenting. A job that she apparently detested so much that she demanded payment, maybe a pound of flesh. And if I didn't do a good job, it was deliberate, and so I should be punished. Never that I couldn't, and that she was placing impossible demands on me. Instead, it was my fault, so I, es I was essentially responsible for my own punishment, neglect, abuse. If I was smarter, better, held up my end of this whole transactional dance in which I effectively serve her, then I'd get better care. Basically, child slave labor in the form of whatever role she put me in. Maid, therapist, surrogate mother, in exchange for be being taken care. No quality work, no care. I have this sneaky, malicious, malevolent voice in my head that's always challenging me, threatening me if I try to do anything for myself. Are you sure you want to do that? What makes you think you know how to care for yourself? It's insidious, cruel, and threatening. If you know you can't do this alone, the idea of reaching out again only to be punished and humiliated for exposing your vulnerability makes you freeze in place. You're like, I better just stay here in my safety zone. It was an ongoing experience to have had to advocate for care constantly growing up. Just this disgusting, competitive, cruel, adversarial climate where I was always on the losing end. All because I wouldn't just go away and leave my mother alone. I kept pushing and pushing for her to step up and that was a mistake. After we would have one of these blowouts, she was happy that she managed to force me into submission by humiliating me with demeaning comments so I would never ask for anything again. She wanted me to know that if I continued to pressure her with demands, there would be consequences, even if it meant destroying me in the process and the relationship which meant nothing to her. I was never her daughter. I was her slave, and I better not step out of line or ask for anything or there would be a battle. There's this sociological theory, the principle of least interest, that states that the person who has the least invested in a relationship has all the power. I guess that about sums it up. If I ever wondered why I didn't stand up to her, it was because of this. She had no conscience and nothing to lose. There was no limit to what she would do because she didn't care if I lived or died. Berating her for being a shitty parent was like sticking my hand in a hornet's nest. So I left her alone, which is what she wanted all along. 
It's really hard to process, impossible to conceive, that there are parents that want nothing more than the absolute best joy-filled life for their children. And I had a mother who kept trying to find excuses and reasons to deprive me of those things. I have to change my perception of self as powerless and weak and understand that most people aren't crazy psychopaths. It's a place to start. At least if I learn what constitutes good parenting, even though it might be hard to understand, I could serve as a guide. I may not have received care as a child, but there's nothing and no one stopping me now, except me. Jasmine Lee Corey, through the first and second chapters, reassures the reader that making up for these deficits is possible in adulthood. Trying to cultivate this sense of worthiness out of thin air feels impossible at times. So I just wanted to read this because... (laughs) It really resonated with me. Um, Yeah, this person says that the mother didn't care if they lived or died. My mother was like that too, except she cared if I died because she she was performance-based, right? She didn't mind if I was like suffering and withering away and like super sick until her friends pointed it out to her and threatened her and... Like, if I died, then she'd be, oh, the woman whose kid died. Or be like, oh, what did she do, right? So that made her care. But, like, for her to be like, my daughter, you know, like, oh, I love this person or whatever. Like, I don't want that. No, it it wasn't anything like that. It was very obvious. Um, So, yeah, um, you know, I've done a lot of work to overcome, like, where I came from and everything, but it's going to be a lifelong battle. These are the kind of wounds that just cut so deeply that we'll probably never fully get over them. We just learn how to build ourselves up around them, right? It's like if you had a missing limb, The limb's never going to come back, no matter what you do. No matter what I do, I'm never going to have a caring mother. I'm never going to change my childhood. You know, those wounds will probably always be there. But what we can do is we can build up the rest of our body to be able to support us. Um, And we can get wheelchairs or, you know, crutches or, you know, whatever it is. We can build up our environment so we keep safe people in our environment. You know, we can build up ourselves. Um, and a huge part of finding my own self-worth, and this sounds totally crazy because before, for me, it was all about accomplishments and oh, look how good I am and look at how amazing things I can do and look at me, right? <laughs> right? You know? Um, and then when I found, you know, as my healing deepened, I really stopped feeling the need to do that, <laughs> which is why, you know, part of it is part of the reason why I say it dropped out of so many things and I stopped um, feeling the need to do that and I just accepted that I am worthy the way I am and that just surviving was an accomplishment and for me just literally breathing is good enough. (laughs) Literally breathing and not being a bad person, not abusing children um, is good enough. Like, yeah. Um, I didn't ask to be here, you know people say you chose your parents hey we don't actually know that um so i'm doing the very best with this life that i have and i'm super happy um super happy with my life there are some things that obviously i wish could change i used to think in the past like you know i'm super smart and talented i was like man like what could my life have looked like if i wasn't born into a situation where I was daily tried to with with living with someone who was trying to destroy me every single day <laughs> you know like imagine if you had to live for oh I don't know a month in the same house as your schoolyard bully and they had all the money and they could tell you what to do imagine that as an adult now imagine that as a child for 16 years <laughs> That, that, was, that was how I grew up. It's, it's unbelievable for me to think about it now. Sometimes I start to feel physically ill when I think about it. So, yeah, I... And, yeah, 
but when I've seen, you know, the, the clients I've talked to, the people I've had relationships with, I've seen people who had the kind of families that on the outside were it was exactly what I wanted, but it actually destroyed them in even worse ways than I am. I really divorced them from a sense of self, from any kind of purpose, um, any kind of autonomy in life. You know, they have a crippling fear of authority. They're still in a uh, Stockholm Syndrome relationship with their horrific, evil parents. Um, parents who ruin all of their intimate relationships, who treat them like children, want to control them. So I, you know, I don't think you know, we need to compare ourselves to other people. But yeah, I, I just kind of hope that, um, and I see it happening. I see it happening for people my age and this generation, the younger generation. Something is shifting, um, and we are like in the infantile stage of human development. That's why we still act like cavemen. That's why people are still trying to destroy their own children because of their own pain. It's such a sick and twisted way of living. Um, yeah, so waking up is uh, painful. <laughs> Um, but the benefits of really getting to know who you are and learning to project this loving kindness and admiration that I might have for a child back onto myself and that's something that I have with me all the time now it's unreal um, especially being out of these romantic relationships with men who wanted to destroy me because they hated their own mothers. They wanted to, you know, criticize me or tell me all that, that'll never work, or you can't do that, or oh, how come you don't know how to retract a, a cord on a power machine in a farm yard? I'm like, <laughs> anyway, men who just want to criticize you, berate you, bring you down. Um, yeah, I, I don't have them in my life. Um, and the dating process, as soon as someone starts, you know, making me feel negatively, they're immediately gone. Um, yeah, for me, I, I, I'm sorry for people who, you know, have the fight response against people who, like, turn mean when they get angry um, or when they're mildly inconvenienced. It's not me. It's not for me. And in the past, I have really... Um, suffered these kind of people and put up with a lot so this is a big um this is progress for me and i'm grateful for it so thank you to good to go 5656 for writing this comment there are a lot of good oh actually there's only looks like there's only two comments here or is there more okay there's a couple of comments here yeah so yeah just know you're not alone thanks for listening